Hello, welcome to part 22 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our question number 106. Which of the following is considered as the most effective orthosis for use in controlling rotation and lateral bending at C1 to C3? Option A, sternal occipital mandibular orthosis. Option B, halo device. Option C, Philadelphia collar. Option D, four poster brace. And the answer is Option B, halo device. Explanation to this question is, the halo device is the must orthosis for controlling rotation and lateral bending at C1 to C3. The halo device is also most effective for use in controlling flexion and extension at C1 to C3. The sternococcipital mandibular orthosis controls extension less effectively than the other orthosis. Now let's move to our question number 107. A physical therapist is observing a patient who is walking with crutches. The patient advises both crutches forward and then swing both legs past the crutches at the same time. Based on the sequence, the patient is demonstrating which crutch gait. Option A, two-point crutch gait. Option B, swing to crutch gait. Option C, swing through crutch gait. Option D, tripod crutch gait. And the answer is Option C, swing through crutch gait. Explanation to this question is, the patient is walking with crutches using the swing through crutch gait. This technique is recommended to patients who are unable to fully bear weight on both legs. Option A is indicated to patients with weakness in both legs. Option B swings both legs at the same time without going the past crutches. Option D is indicated to patients with paraplegia through to do swing to gait pattern. Now let's move to question number 108. A patient comes to therapist because she has noted pronounced tuff of hair on the center of her spinal column in the lumbar area. The therapist notes no loss of motor sensory function. The patient most likely has what type of spina bifida? Option A, meningocelia. Option B, meningomyocelia. Option C, spina bifida oculata. Option D, spiringomyocelia. And the answer is Option C, spina bifida oculata. Explanation to this question is, spina bifida oculata is a benign disorder. It presents with no decrease in function. There is no protrusion of spinal cord or its associated stretchers as in choice A and B. Now let's move to question number 109. The therapist is ambulating a patient with a above knee amputation. The new process is causes the heel on the involved foot to move laterally at the toe off. Which of the following is most likely cause of this deviation? Option A. Too much internal rotation of the prosthetic knee. Option B. Too much external rotation of the prosthetic knee. Option C. Too much outset of prosthetic foot. Option D. None of the above would cause this deviation. And the answer is. Option A, too much internal rotation of the prosthetic knee. Explanation to this question is, this deviation is commonly referred to as lateral heel weep. Excessive internal rotation to prosthetic knee is one of the cause of this deviation. Excessive external rotation of knee causes a medial heel weep. Now let's move to question number 110. You are studying kinesiology and its mechanical principles as it relates to anatomy. The pull of brachioradialis and the wrist extensor to maintain the position of elbow flexion is an example of which type of lever system found in the body. Option A, first class lever. Option B, second class lever. Option C, third class lever. Option D, fourth class lever. And the answer is Option B, second class lever. Explanation to this question is, in a second class lever, the force arm is longer than the weight arm. An example is the brachioralis and wrist extensor on the elbow flexion. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.